want to say a big thanks uh, to everyone who tuned in, wrote questions. We're glad we managed to be able to give you guys something to work on at home. That was the whole idea of it. Um, there was a lot of great feedback that came into us uh, about Flex. So we're going to recap on that in a little while. Um, we just want to wish everybody a uh, good Friday. Obviously, have a you know, great Easter weekend. Uh, the weather's lovely here in Verbier. I'll take the camera outside, actually, and show you the views. Um, didn't have a tripod last week, uh, but this week we have, so you can easily uh, easily set that up. But there's the views um, across the mountains there. You can see on the far side the Petit Comban, um, the Rogna, and over there towards Trion, Chamonix direction. Um, but it's a beautiful day here in Verbier. Obviously, we can't get up the mountain, um, and everyone seems to be following the rules, uh, mostly here in, in town, which is great. Um, so as I said, we're going we're gonna to talk this week about um, uh, lateral control. We're going to talk about um, alignment and guys skiing in symmetry or not skiing in symmetry. There are a lot of our questions. Um, Jordan and Rob from the team are going to be keeping in touch and pinging any questions over. Um, last week, the quality wasn't great, and obviously we were just testing out with the camera, so hopefully the quality is a little bit better, and we'll be working through some things on the screen, and I can bring the camera a bit closer and show you that this week. Um, just a few people I made a note I want to thank. Um, is uh, uh, Here we go. Let's have a look at it. Um, so on my notes, I've got... Uh, yeah, so the people that wrote in quite quickly last week, there's a, a Canadian qualified instructor uh, called Adrian Hamilton, who had some really interesting points on flex. And his point I wanted to bring up first, because um, he was talking about how he was showing the, the at-home exercise of putting your ski boot on and the flex pattern. And it's really important for people to realise when you're, when you're skiing and you're flowing and going through your ranges of movement, it won't be as kind of like uh, mechanically looking as it does at home. At home, the idea of the exercise and the reason we wanted to try a, a work home exercise was literally to get people used to um, the, the sometimes alien feeling for a lot of people of putting a ski boot on, a hard molded plastic around your ankle and expecting that ankle to flex like the other joints. Obviously it doesn't. Uh, and, and as we said as instructors, when we find a lot of people coming on courses, we, we always find people usually restricted in that joint. So from that perspective, um, we just wanted to, to, to cover that point. Adrian had a really good point. He's uh, an instructor in Canada, but also works in, uh, in the Chill Factory, which is one of the, uh, the UK's indoor snow domes and, and a really great facility like Hemorn or, or all the others. Um, and he said he often sees people looking very rigid, you know, very mechanical movements. And we want to sort of emphasize and stress the point that, that skiing is obviously about flowing and we want people to better you know, move and flow on the sport. The main idea that sometimes how an at-home exercise can look rigid is because obviously you're not flowing, you're not on snow. And sometimes it's just merely used to get used to the boot plastic. I mean, I know when I buy a new pair of boots or get a new pair of boots from Dalbello, um, I sometimes just put them on anyway for half an hour or an hour at home. Um, Alex, um, Alex Wallace, who, who fits my boots in the UK, uh, and Dorian here at Ski Service, um, two, two of the world's best boot fitters, um, you know, they would also recommend, you know, don't just get your boot fitted and expect it, um, you know, a couple of weeks later to feel like it's fitting like a glove. You know, get at home, get sort of, you know, get aggressive with it and put some flex through the boot. Um, but that was um, great feedback um, from Adrian Hamilton. Um, also from uh, Jeremy Beavis, who's an osteopath in the UK. Um, he had some great uh, take on it, and, and we'll, we'll post some of his information to you guys later. But we've had a lot of people um, in the medical world writing in and giving great feedback on that, but also feedback beyond you know, our knowledge base, uh, which is really, really important. Um, there's another guy uh, who wrote onto our, our YouTube channel uh, called Janos. Janos had some great ideas and, and a good take on muscle memory, so thanks a lot for your feedback, Janos. Uh, and Hamish Renwick. Uh, who works quite closely with our UK partner, Isokinetic. Hamish is a strength and conditioning professional, and um, you, you might be hearing a bit more from him over the coming weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, and then also another instructor, Adrian, um, from Milton Keynes. Um, he had some great feedback, and it was something that I chatted to him yesterday on the phone. He was talking about uh, boot flex index, um, and his conversation was going between, a, do I go for a 110 or 120? Um, a lot of these questions are a more detailed uh, kind of conversation to have 
than just on a webinar. So on the webinar, we can get some information across you and give you some at home, you know, working on ideas. Um, but what we have done over the past week is had quite a few telephone calls. Um, but you know, myself and Rob and Jordan have been emailing, messaging people, texting people, and we've got a lot of great feedback from it. So, so thanks to everyone. If I forgot to mention someone, we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up on next week's chat. Um, so that was the that was a great thing for us. We also um, got a, uh, a lot of interaction going on on our on our um, Instagram page, um, our account Instagram page. And there's a hashtag Ski Technic Lab, which we use when we did our tour around the UK. But if you can see what the guys are doing here, um, I'll tell you what I do is I bring the camera up and show you. You can actually uh, you can see uh, quite clearly because we've got a few prizes to give away this week. We've got a few items here, which we're going to be doing every week. Vocal have very kindly given us some T-shirts to give away. Planks have given us some beanies, some of their cool kit. Uh, Vocal have given us um, some water bowls. If anyone's going touring or wants it in their backpack. And also, for those of you that get off piece, there's a, there's a marker touring kit there. So we're going to give those away. But just looking um, at what some of the guys were doing. The picture at the top there is from Karen L, who came on our master's course this year. Um, great skier, but also um, a photographer. And she was putting in a bit of arty work into her at-home bootflex exercise. Um, there are some great uh, uh, exercises being put in from, from many people. A lot of effort. I think one prize has to go to our good friend here, who skis with us very often and also um, uh, runs an, an amazing wine bar in London, which we often go and see. Uh, Bob... Uh, if you ever go, if you do go and look at it, do check out Bob's video. He's another competition winner from this week, and Jules and uh, John Proctor. That, uh, so, so we've had a lot of um, feedback and information on, but that's more for you guys to go and check out and have a look online. But as I say, those guys are all winning uh, prizes this week uh, for putting in the effort and actually working at home. So, so that's what our sort of uh, our evaluation of of last week was. Um, thanks again for everyone writing in. The, 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 to conclude, the sort of recap on it, um, everyone that did some work over the last week and worked at home on boot flex exercises definitely felt like they, they felt more in touch with their boot. They almost, the people that had just brought boots felt like they had a few little niggling pressure points. And there's nothing worse than going on your ski holiday or your ski week away and then on your first morning after a half an hour in thinking, oh God, you know, the outside of my foot is getting a lot of pressure or my instep is getting a lot of pressure and having to take time out of your ski week. And those guys actually, they, they rustled and then it gave their boot enough sort of um, aggro, you could say, that they, they highlighted pressure points. And now they know the pressure points, when the shops do finally open, they can go and get those tweaked out and looked at. So a lot of positive work there from last week. So as we said, um, this week's subject, uh, so episode two, you could say, is to do with skier symmetry. Um, I'm just going to bring the video up. Um, some of you will be able to see it, some of you won't. I know people have got different connections on this. Um, but skier symmetry is something, obviously, we focus a lot on at the academy. And it's a, it's a big thing. I mean, a lot of skiers that we find who come on our courses ski in, in what's known as an A-frame. All right, So that's just a, a very commonly used word. An A-frame is simply an asymmetric stance where people's knees are closer together than their feet. Uh, and obviously, when you're on your ski edges, um, you want your skis, you want your legs to be symmetrical so your ski edges can be matching uh, and at equal angles. Um, so we're just going to show you a little bit of video that we use when we do our, our Ski Technique Lab talk. And it's just a, a simple video that shows how, in theory, as you go into a turn, you should be looking at um, having the, the hips, the knees and the feet the same distance apart to try and get effective use. Now this is just an image um, of turns being made in powder snow. This is just um, just up on the back of Mont 4. Great year, I think it was 2013, and we had a lot of a lot of days of skiing powder. But when the skis are submerged under the powder at a certain uh, at a certain point, if the skis are at different angles, the trajectory of the skis goes in different directions. And I'm sure some of you watching have probably felt that. It, it's quite a frustrating feeling. Um, so we're going to show you a couple of things. Now, as we talked about last week, um, on this thing here, we're covering those three main subjects, technique, biomechanics, and equipment. So from the technique point of view, we're going to look at um, what sometimes goes wrong. So we're going to keep it quite brief because we're not going to turn this into a two-hour webinar. Um, but um, the, the two types of A-frame we want to show you are A-frames where the knees fall in and collapse in together, or A-frames where the feet split wider apart than the knees. 
And there's a couple of different reasons for that. So let me just show you a few skiers coming down. So the first skier that you see is going to be a skier that shows you the A-frame with the knees coming close together. And in this picture, um, I'll bring the camera closer just so you can see it. You've got an angle here where, let's have a look. This might be able to show you. So on this skier's angle, you can see how his knees have dropped in closer to the feet. And the solution from a ski technique point of view, from that type of picture that we see, is a little bit more leg extension on the outside right leg would really help get rid of that A-frame. And also there's a slight kink in the inside leg. And you can see, as he comes through the turn, just a few more frames, that tiny A-frame at the start of the turn makes the skis already go in a different direction. So that's an A-frame where a leg extension on the outside would really help and benefit. Um, I'm gonna show you the next one, but you can already see here the picture where the feet have gone further apart than the knees. Um, on the next image, I'm gonna show you a skier who comes through his turn, and as he comes through, you can see, just through a lack of angulation and a, a, a dynamic position in the body, the guy's outside ski is drifting away. There are a lot of other technical reasons. You know, the guy wasn't in the right position at the start of the turn, he's slightly on the back of his skis as he came through, and, it, and there's not much angle in the body. So it sort of goes like a straight line from his knee right up to his armpit. So he, he didn't have an opportunity, he didn't put pressure against the ski at the start of the turn, and, and he lost that ski, it just drifted away. And he was left in a, in a frame, an A-frame, because his feet were wider apart than his knees. Um, so there are just two points we wanted to try and show you guys that makes sense as to why people ski with an A-frame and why they're not symmetrical. So on those two positions, um, people at that level would struggle. Um, we're just gonna show you an exercise here. Um, give me two seconds to pop this camera back on. So an exercise that will, will do a couple of things. So from a technique point of view, we've talked about how um, on the fix of those two things, the first one we saw, the leg extension here, if a leg has just gone through a turn, but has stayed quite flexed, um, that leg collapsed a little bit for that skier. A little bit of a leg extension on the outside will make that A-frame disappear. And on the other skier, we want to try and see dynamics. But the other skier could have done with creating more dynamic angles and getting pressure a little bit earlier against the outside ski. Um, another reason for A-frames is the inside leg. A lot of people, when they ski, sometimes forget that it's not just the outside ski that gets the attention. The inside leg and the inside ski needs to get a little bit of attention too. And we often see a, a lazy inside leg. So from a technique point of view, that's a really brief overview. Now I know we'll have a million questions in from people and other reasons for A-frames, and there are a lot of other reasons, and we will cover that in the question time that we get with you guys. Um, from a technique point of view, that's what we're gonna be chatting about there. The, the, the biomechanical point of view is quite interesting because we're gonna talk about the, the equipment and the biomechanics together. So from a biomechanical point of view, um, we like to think of how the legs work when they ski um, and, and waking up a, a lateral axis or a lateral control. Now, when you look at someone's leg, there's obviously a lot of movement that can happen, even locked into a ski boot where the leg can move laterally. And we've done a lot of work over the, the years of trying to get people to switch on their lateral control muscle groups. And when they do this, we found that they avoid A-frames, they avoid slipping into an A-frame, and even if they didn't have an A-frame, and as we said last week, skiing isn't like golf, it's not static, we're always on the move, and the terrain is always changing. Sometimes it changes unexpectedly. And sometimes when you get a sudden movement and your feet slip away, you can, you can hold a certain amount of lateral control to help stabilize you. And if you've ever seen people charging down a, a free ride face or, or, or skiing competitively, quite often the lateral control muscles are switched on to take shock, to avoid the feet being buckled, the legs being buckled away from you. Um, we do an exercise, and this is your at-home exercise to think about, called a 10-second test. And the 10-second test is simply, very slowly, putting your feet towards each other, and we try and get people to think about doing it over 10 seconds. So when they're in this position, you count down from one, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds. People need to be aware that sometimes you don't get the pressure that you want on your feet and it's too much friction. So you, you lean against something. You can use your bathroom sink or your kitchen sink. Lean against it and then slowly pulling the feet together. And you'll find that whatever it is, whether it's to do with making the right surface slippy enough at home, 
whether that's the bathroom, the tile floor, carpet, carpet with slippers, we just use these sliders. You can sort of get them off Amazon. They cost about four or five quid. They're really useful. They've got a, a spongy side on one side for a certain type of surface. That might work on a, on a sofa or something, and then a, a, a slippery, glidey surface. But on here, just on my carpet, there's a little bit too much friction. And you have to be careful here, because what you don't want is to have too much friction and put any stress through the knee joint. This needs to be done with no stress through the knee joint, okay? This needs to be done where you, you use a chair, use something to lean on at first, press against it so it takes your body weight, and then slowly pulling it in towards each other. So if you watch here, my feet on the outside, I count from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And on this movement, what's really interesting, so you're at home exercise to try between now and next week. When you first try this, what we find is people's legs wobble because they're not used to using uh, the adductors to a degree um, as, as a day-to-day -day movement. You know, in skiing, we would say that if you want to be a competent skier, avoid the A-frame and try to um, think about having stability that can protect your knee joints and ultimately try and ski safe, but ski technically well. Your adductors should be switched on when you're skiing, but not just your adductors, the whole chain of your adductors, your core and your glutes working together. And what we find is when people first try the exercise, the legs shake laterally quite a lot. Okay, so they, they go through a shaking process and at home, you'll try this and you'll see it. I mean, what we would say is, on that Ski Technique Lab, the hashtag Ski Technique Lab page, please upload your videos. It's quite interesting to see how your first attempt at it was and how it was a week later or two weeks later. We tend to find after two to three weeks, the shaking stops and people get a very solid and fluid movement. Um, it, it, you can look at this as well from, a, you know, if, if someone came up to you um, and your legs were super relaxed and you're in this position and someone came and rubby tackled you from the side, you're gonna get the movement pushing your leg in. In skiing in a similar way, if you're skiing with a constant um, switching on of your lateral control muscles, whatever happens, and remember, the sport of skiing is so much about lateral movement. Your hip, the center of your mass, is moving over your feet constantly. And you can't expect or be presumptuous to sort of think that the line between your ankle and your hip is just gonna be stabilized. It's, it's really not. And you do have to put work in there to think about switching it on. The faster you go at skiing and the more, more aggressive your skiing becomes, the more this is you know, even more relevant to you. So having the muscles switched on will create stability and stability can create consistency. So when we talk about um, this, this element of keeping symmetry in the legs, um, we, think, we, we often remind people of something like micro-correction. So if a turn doesn't go wrong, or you don't have a yard sale and you wipe out and, and you know, your kit's all over the slope, if you just make a small correction in a turn, um, you'll make your turn. You'll get through from start to finish and you'll link your turns together. It might not be the smoothest or cleanest, but when you make your great turns, when you make the turns that feel like they absolute, you absolutely nailed it, nothing went wrong, they're not often. You know, so, so quite often we ski with what we call micro-correction. Micro-correction is kind of tidying up elements of the turn. They didn't quite go wrong enough to, to wipe out, but didn't just feel like they worked perfectly. And if you ski with a symmetry, a, a really nice symmetrical stance throughout your turns, some people watching this won't be able to ski with a symmetrical stance simply because of their physical makeup. Um, so th there's, there's an element to this where we're not expecting everyone to be perfectly symmetrical and, and that's the only way to ski. That's not true. You'll often see athletes and racers caught in positions in between turns where they're not always symmetrical. So it's not to say symmetry is the be all and end all, but what it is to say is quite an obvious thing that you'd want to aim towards um, to just keep yourself on the right side of balance, control, and getting those skis working in unison. So, so the micro-correction aspect, if you can switch on this muscle group, and like I say, this is an at-home exercise to work on that you then implement into your skiing. We've often found um, that even without giving someone a, a technical exercise, or to, you know, this is a ski exercise, go and work on it, it'll fix your A-frame. Even giving someone a, a, an exercise like the 10-second test, they've come back on the slope and come and ski with us, gone and worked on it fanatically, you could say, but they've come back, and we as coaches have seen some dramatic changes. So, it, so it's something worth bearing in mind. It's not, um, it's not the only fix. You know, most of the fixes that, that go on are going to go on up the mountain on, on ski lessons and things like that with your instructors. 
But this is a great exercise that we found uh, that brings stability and you know, it, it, it reduces the amount of micro correction that you need to make within a turn. And that can bring consistency and continuity to your skiing. Um, so that's the exercise. Um, there is a video on our website, which Rob or Jordan uh, will post. Um, and also, um, like from last week, there are, um, there are tools. Um, Jordan just upda updated our website. So if you now go to our biomechanics page on the website, you can see a download uh, to download the drop test ruler, a download to look at this board here. There's a, you can print it out at home. It's like an A2 board uh, that will show you the range test that you can take with you at home. Um, so there's a couple of bits on there to help you as well. Uh, but the video uh, to do with lateral control is on the website and, and it's very informative. So whatever we may have um, skipped through or talked over too quickly, it will definitely be on there. Um, so write in your questions on, on how you feel about sometimes skiing in symmetry. Does it affect a certain element of your skiing? Does it affect your off-piece skiing? We find a lot of people writing in with questions about um, symmetry and how when they want to sort of submerge themselves in powder or free ride terrain, off-piece terrain, that's the bit for them that really catches them out, where it shows it up and then it's not, not quite there. We're gonna talk about that last subject of equipment as well. So on ski boots, um, ski boots, you know, most people watching this are going to have a pair of ski boots at home. Um, that's a, 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 what you would maybe say a classic sort of race boot. Um, a lot of instructors will wear that boot. It's the 140 Flex um, Del Bello DRS. Um, and it's a boot that if you look at it here, I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see. The boot has a, um, a device on the side here and here where you can slightly, not, not massively, slightly adjust the cuff of the boot. And we said on this session, um, I'll just show you that again so you can all see it. It's like your, uh, your degree of movement where you can use this buckle to adjust the upper cuff. Um, and on this ski boot, the, um, the, the ability to modify the boot um, is, is great. So if, when, when I ski, I know for a fact that when, when I stand on my skis, this leg's straight, okay? And I've done a lot of work here, you know, with, with, um, with like Alex, um, uh, what Alex Wallace was talking about before, you'll be able to find her on our website through, um, through a, a, a tag. Uh, my left leg definitely bows out slightly. Um, so if I left my ski boots as they came out of the box, um, I, I would struggle with that, with that leg. The leg would be putting too much pressure on one side of the boot. And, it, and it's the boot fitter's sort of goal to try and make the upper cuff of the boot here, this part, you could say the green part of the boot, try to match my legs. Um, there's, there's so much science behind this, and we're not going to delve too far into the, the, the real sort of deeper side, but what we're going to do is just give you a sort of a bite-sized sort of look at it, and something to sort of try and create awareness, so you can have a look at your boots and think to yourself, think back, when you got your ski boots fitted, um, did they take their time to make a, a, a proper footbed, you know, to support your ankle? Uh, we're going to show you two footbeds here. So this is a footbed. They're both excellent footbeds. Um, this is footbed that Alex uh, made for me in the UK. And this is a, boot fed, uh, boot, uh, bed, a footbed that Dorian made for me here in Verbier, our uh, partner shop, Ski Service. Um, so the, 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 the footbeds are fantastic. And I'm going to bring these closer to the camera so you can see. Um, what, what it is for me, uh, when I ski, when I make a turn, I want to know that I'm supported here. We said earlier that lateral control, uh, lateral movements, lateral sort of projection is everything about the sport. So you're finishing your right hand turn here and your hips are going to move over your feet and go over to your new turn here. If this arch isn't supported, um, you can imagine your, your ankle is going to roll inside the boot. And that's going to be one of the things that might lead you into an A-frame. Um, also, going back to last week's uh, topic, if you're not supported correctly in your boot and you are collapsing into the boot, um, that will also block your ability to be able to flex at the ankle joint as well. So that's the footbed there. You can see how it's made. Um, it's not a five minute job, as you can see, it's a professional job. So you can go and get your boots, your ski boots fitted, or you can get your ski boots professionally fitted. There are two very, very different subjects. This is made by one of our partners, um, Cedas, um, great company make loads of good kit. Uh, but as you can see, that, that's how the footbed is made to stabilize me if I'm skiing. You know, up to very high speeds, that, that will really hold me in a good position. Um, here's the other footbed. As I said to you, made by our Verbier partner, Ski Service. 
Um, so Ski Service is the shop all of our guys go to when they arrive in resort. As you can see, they're partnered up with Cedas. They've got their own products that work really well from that point of view. Um, that again has had some time here to be molded. You can see on the back here how that's been made absolutely flat. So when it sits in the boot, it's not going to move. Uh, and that's been specifically made to support a certain element of my of my foot and how my um, biomechanics work inside my foot. So footbeds are essential, absolutely essential, if you want to make sure that you are maintaining a really good position on your skis. Quite often, the footbed alone, when we've told someone, we've seen someone, for example, they come to do a, an academy course and they've gone and done the ski off in the morning, and, and you can really see when, when they come down the slope, they're just collapsing into their boots. Sometimes it's because their muscles are not switched on anyway, uh, but, but a lot of the time it's because they've got a ski boot that hasn't got a professionally made footbed. Um, so we can't stress enough how important it is to try to be supported correctly on your ski boots. You know, reinforcing that point, it's a lateral moving sport with a lot of force going through that boot, through your foot, and, and it's essential that these are made properly. So the footbeds, that's just showing you two different types of footbeds that have been made for me. Um, and again, looking at a boot professional, if someone comes in and takes a good look at your legs, you know, ask yourself this question after you've, you've watched this, this, um, this webinar. When you went and got your boots fitted, did the boot fitter take the time to really analyze the angle of your lower leg, look at your leg, look at your flexing pattern uh, to check, uh, to see if the cuff and everything else was made to make the boot and your lower leg match. And there are obviously other things you can do to your boots. You can put wedges in um, either side to try and help with um, making that cuff align to your leg. And a very, you know, there are other more extreme sort of measures you can do with, it, with making different angles on the bottom of the boot and even adjusting how your bindings are set on your skis. Those type of situations are much more, um, almost a medical, a medical thing that you'd get done at a very different level. Um, but that sort of gives you a good idea of, of, of symmetry from a point of view of ski technique and, and thinking about it. You know, we're, we're really open to questions that you guys want to write in to things that have helped you with your A-frame. Um, we talked about uh, the, the, the leg extension. You know, sometimes people can just have a leg that has a kink in it, a little bit of extra leg extension, which we're covering um, on week five. So at webinar five is all about leg extension, but we'll get to that. Um, you want to know a little bit more about leg extension, go on the website and you can see a video. Um, it's the fifth one of our icons out of the six boxes, and it will show you a little bit, you know, about a little bit more about leg extension. Um, inside leg, you know, a lot of the time people, they make their turns and they don't have the same mindset for what's going on with their inside leg as the attention they gave to their outside leg, which is fair enough. The outside leg is usually, you know, the dominant one and it needs to have the attention, but just pay a little bit of extra attention to the inside leg. The, you know, there are a lot of drills and exercises that can help with that. Um, as we said before, the, the video that Rob will post up on the chat group for this um, will show you the, the exercises that you can work through on it. Um, so that, that's the whole idea behind um, what we think about and what we look at with symmetry. Um, you know, we, we can't stress enough, the fitter you are and the more that you put time into making sure your muscle groups uh, are in good shape, you know, your endurance is good, but you, you, you're just basically getting your body in, in the right type of place makes a big difference to how you, your body works and functions. Um, we, as I said before, we had a lot of feedback um, from people in the medical industry that wrote in and they were they were really interested in the talk because obviously, as we said before, the whole point about this talk is, is to kind of empower you guys with things to go away and work on yourselves. It's not sort of saying uh, you need an instructor that's by your side the whole time to do it. You, you really don't, you know, there's so much of this content and information you can get from the internet, from looking online. Um, and I know some of you watching have got your instructors that you work with and, 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 and that's brilliant. And, and we had some really good stories of some great coaches out there that have been doing brilliant work by the looks of it with people. But we've also had some, some really interesting stories of people that have worked on these exercises themselves. Um, I've been getting into conversations with the, the, um, Hannah and Stephanie here at the, the Verbier Physio. Um, been doing some rehab work on a shoulder injury, which has been incredible. Some of the best physio work I've had. But just having the conversations with, with physios uh, osteos, you know, chiropractors, people that are really fanatical and passionate about skiing and getting their input into things you could be working on, um, 
you know, rather than going to people like this for a, uh, a an injury rehabilitation, um, it's quite interesting to sort of start to think about it from a prehab point of view. You know, the idea of getting yourself in a, a really nice symmetrical position, um, look at how you stabilize, look at how you set up before you hit the slopes, because you can greatly reduce the risk of a, of a ski injury by looking at your sort of um, your pre-ski setup and how all that works. Um, so that's the idea, guys, behind today's session is to talk a little bit about symmetry, give you a bit of an insight into the boots and, and how they work for us. And, and you know, as we said before, the, 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 the footbed is the base of building up that whole structure. Make sure the footbed has been fitted professionally and question the, the boot fitter. You know, it, I just showed you a couple of bits here on the, the back of the footbed. It's not necessary for everybody, but, you know, question it. You know, go in the shop and say, do I need uh, a block at the back to help stabilize it, to hold the footbed in, in, in a stronger position? Um, that's something we would definitely encourage people to do. Um, like I said before, the, uh, the, the stay at home exercises, the lockdown exercises, lateral control, 10 second test. Um, don't put any stress through your knee joints. Don't make it that the floor is, there's so much friction that you're, you're working like crazy to try and pull these in and all of a sudden you st overstress your knee joint. Get a really nice slippery surface. Stabilize yourself at first as we showed you using a chair. Nothing more simple than that. Um, kitchen uh, floor, you know, bathroom surface, they're the obvious ones to work on. You may not even need to buy these. You, make, you can make use a sheet of paper like a sheet of A4 and, and find that the friction works really nicely on it. But look out for the legs shaking or the legs wobbling. And the legs wobbling and shaking is an indicator that it's a muscle uh, group that you've not ex exercised very much. And, and you know, we're telling you that when you ski, it would be great if you rocked up onto a ski course or went on your ski week with this muscle tuned up. Because the, the tuning up of these muscles and making sure that they can laterally control that movement between the ankle and the hip, trying to stabilize that knee and try and not allow the knee to go through too much torque or stress as you're making your ski turns. It's a great thing for, you know, reducing those micro corrections, as we said, but it's, it also reduces the risk of injury, risk of something slipping away suddenly, having it switched on. Um, so we hope that's been of use to you guys. As we said before, and we showed you on the web page, please um, send in your clips, you know, show some videos of you doing the lateral control exercise. Um, if anyone's got any questions on kit, fire them to us now via the Facebook page on the comments page last week. I, I mean, I know we looked at it uh, today or yesterday and we were shocked. I mean, there was about 28, there was a reach of just over 28,000 that, that had seen it. Um, we had about 9,000 something views um, and, and a lot of really positive feedback, you know, so people, actually went away, um, well they didn't go away, they stayed at home, but they, they, they at home worked on something really basic, you know, just something really basic and they encouraged and, and, and put through a range of movement that may have been not as, uh, as, as productive as it was and they changed something, you know, they changed an element of, of what will happen when they probably go and then work on their ski technique um, on the mountain. Um, so hopefully guys that's been of use. As we said before last week, um, we've got the prizes, you know, Vocal t-shirts, these are not things you buy in shop, they're, they're sort of, um, you know, for team members and things like that. So there's some t-shirts there, uh, the planks hats, as we showed you before, um, they're obviously our clothing sponsor for our, our ski kit. Um, planks make our academy jacket, which some of you guys might not, some of you guys might know, this is our, this is our team jacket. So um, thanks to planks for giving the guys uh, plenty of, um, plenty of kit. And we'll be building up on that over the coming weeks. Um, so enjoy your Easter weekend, guys. Hopefully this has been of use to you. For those that aren't on YouTube or people that were asking in about it, we'll be publishing this on, um, sorry, on Facebook. We'll be publishing this on YouTube as well, and you'll be able to watch it from that point of view. But um, yeah, stay at home, stay safe. Enjoy your Easter weekend and um, watch your ski videos. There's a brilliant video, actually. I'm sure most of you have seen it because it went viral. Uh, but if you haven't, have a look out for it or search it of a guy that was in his uh, chalet room by looks at it, I, I don't know, but he had his ski kit there and he, uh, he made a ski adventure with his bed sheets and his mattress and he was climbing up and touring and then he was free ride making turns down. Absolute genius bit of uh, cinematography and well worth a watch. But that was our, our kind of favorite video from the last week. Really, really cool. Um, awesome. I hope it's been of use, guys. If I forgot anything, which I probably have, 
or forgot someone or forgot to mention something here or, or, or whizzed over something, please write it in. Uh, it's really easy for us to, uh, to put information out there. And as we said the previous week, uh, the last point, if you've got video that you want us to look at either at home privately um, or to show it um, next week on the, on the recap session before the session starts of asymmetric steam, please feel free to send your videos in. If they're massive files, use uh, the, the WeTransfer link, you know, send it to us, uh, the team at warrensmith-skiacademy.com. Just WeTransfer us your video, or quite often, um, you can just send it through Facebook Messenger or, or WhatsApp or something like that if you've got our, our contacts. Um, cool, nice one guys. Have a great Easter weekend. All the best from us at the Academy, and we hope you've enjoyed the webinar. I hope you get something from it. Thanks a lot. Bye.